Has a man ever said or acted like he cares about you, but won't commit? And this happens because men know these days, men know if they act like they care or even say that they can care, care about you, they can get companionship from you, they can get connection, and they can get sex without any little, little or no commitment, excuse me. Okay. Okay. So with that said, the dating marketplace doesn't favor women. Now, a lot of the people in the red pill, red pill community will say it does favor women. Well, certainly women hold the cards when it comes to sex. But at the end of the day, men hold the cards when it comes to commitment. That's right. Men hold the cards. And given that these days, what did I say in my notes? I said, there's no need for a man to commit because sex is free. Sex is free. So. This begs the question, how do you differentiate between the men who are going to use you versus those men who genuinely want a serious full commitment, okay? Because the reality is, is men, sadly these days, a significant percentage of men, not all men, not all men will use you. In fact, many men won't even intentionally use you. That's right. Most men won't intentionally use you. They do it by not default by, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm stumbled here. Not by accident, but it's because men are just as equally confused in the dating marketplace. Now, let me be clear about the men I'm talking about. I'm talking about men in the over 40 category, which roughly about 75% of singles over 45 years old are divorced. And men who go through a divorce, just like women who go through divorce, are oftentimes incredibly confused as to what they're looking for in a, in a relationship. That's right. They're confused. In fact, many men in particular might have been so burned in their previous relationship or their previous marriage that they are actually gun shy. So what happens is human beings want companionship. They want connection. They want sex. And yet they don't recognize that commitment is the real value in a relationship. And yet couples these days spend so little time developing the two most important ingredients for a healthy, happy relationship, and that's trust and commitment. That's right, trust and commitment. Because humans don't really know how to get to know one another. Now, let me explain what I mean by getting to know one another. So I want to tell you a quick story about a woman who reached out to me for coaching She had been in a relationship for three years. It was a long distance relationship. It was about a 200 mile drive. So it wasn't flying, it was driving. And they did it for three years. And when they finally agreed that they would move in together with the intent of getting married, okay? In fact, she had to disrupt her family. She had to go through family court just to be able to take her children with her because she was so in love with this man who she saw every other week for a weekend, mostly she drove out to him. And they were in this bubble relationship, as I'll talk about in a moment, that when she finally moved in with them, within six months, they broke up. Think about it, a three-year relationship. And when she finally, when they finally declared their love, they're gonna move in together, within six months, they broke up. Why? Because she really didn't know this person until she began living with him. That's right. You really don't know a person. And today's dating marketplace really doesn't emphasize how to get to know another human being. We really don't. We we have a very passive way of approaching it. And these days, I've often said that dating is just a very long, strung out version of friends with benefits. That's how you're being used. In other words, you're getting the benefit of some companionship. You're getting benefit of some connection, you're getting the benefit of sex without any real commitment if it's a long drawn out process. Now, some men will say to you, oh, it takes me a long time to get to know a person. Takes me a long time to get to know a person. You know, what's fascinating to me. You ask anybody or you ask any man who's absolutely in love with his partner. He's absolutely in love with his partner. He demonstrates that he's in love with her. He will tell you that he knew very early on that she was the one. Now, I don't like emphasizing the term she's the one, but I mean, he knew very early on that he wanted to commit to her. She was the one he wanted to commit to. 
It didn't take him years to figure that out. He actually knew it very quickly. And while their process to maybe full commitment of either moving in together or getting married might have taken a while, he was fully engaged in the process. And ladies, if you find yourself in a relationship with a man who's not fully engaged in the process, then you might find yourself being used by a guy. And you know what's interesting? I was reading the book. Um, there's a, there's a, in the book, where is it? Uh, How to be in a grown up in a relationship. One of the therapists goes on to say people stay in miserable relationships because the fear of leaving is more painful than the, than the fear of not getting what you want, not getting, not getting the, what your needs met. And it's not so much the fear of not getting your needs met. In other words, the fear of leaving so outweighs the fact that you're not getting your needs met. And many of you fall for these relationships where you're being used. Remember I said earlier, men aren't doing this intentionally. They're just rather unconscious to this because the men who say, I need to take it slow, the men who say, I'm not ready for a serious relationship, well, then they haven't contemplated how much it hurts another human being to be ambivalent. Think about that. They haven't, men haven't contemplated how much it hurts another person, even if they're completely forthright. I know men, and I've done this myself. I've been very upfront with women. I said, look, I like you, okay? But I don't want to commit to you. And it fascinates me how many of these women would keep coming back for more. And I'm like, it was just sex, okay? Now, I wasn't blatant at that, but I was literally saying, I don't want to commit to you. It doesn't feel like the right relationship. But they would keep trying more, trying harder to convince me. Ladies, you don't need to chase men. If a man isn't interested, it's time for you to move on. So I'm going to share with you the seven things that men say or do. And by the way, while the title says shocking things, quite frankly, these are the most obvious things on the planet. And you, some people just need to be hit over the head over and over and over again so they actually sinks in. It's one of the reasons why I repeat myself so frequently. So the number one is your time together is mostly about sex. That's obvious. As I said before, you might be the gatekeepers of sex. In other words, you hold the cards when sex, but the minute you have sex, the guy holds the cards of commitment. And I'm here to encourage you at least get some level of commitment before you're physically intimate with them. Get some agreement of monogamy. Get some agreement of exclusivity. It's why I created my dating vows. And by the way, I'll put the link up here for the dating vows. Where is that? Right here. And there's a link in the below. Get some level of commitment. Now, someone wrote to me, this is ludicrous trying to get this commitment from a guy. And yet, isn't it fascinating? Two people will have sex together with little or no agreements to one another. And the, the dating vows is simply, I agree to explore the process of getting to know you with the intent of declaring something serious in the next three to six months. It's, you're both agreeing to this. I agree to be monogamous sexually while we have regular sex together. I agree not to actively seek to meet and date others while we're in the dating process, including taking down our dating profiles if that's where you met. I agree to speak up if this isn't working for me versus pulling back, ghosting, and disappearing. I'm a big proponent of doing check-ins with each other on a regular basis. And I agree to invest regular in the time in the process of getting to know you, which looks like we spend two, three, four days, nights, a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in our personal and our professional life. That is your that's a suggested standard you might want to have. Now, 90% of guys will bail on this because these are the men who don't know what they want. By the way, everybody is clear on what they, what they uh, don't want. You know, it's fascinating to me. Everybody is clear on what they don't want, okay? But what they are not clear as to what they do want. I have women come to me for coaching. By the way, there's a link right here to schedule a discovery call with me and the links in the show notes as well. It fascinates me how few women think they know what they want. They all know what they don't want. Everybody doesn't want a liar. They don't want a cheater. They don't want this. They don't want that. That doesn't help you. You have to know, understand compatibility. Folks, if you're not familiar with my uh, relationship iceberg chart, excuse the glare, okay? Look, 
Attraction is above the waterline. That's chemistry. Compatibility is shared values, blendable lifestyles, and emotional maturity. That's where compatibility lies. And many of you don't really understand the mechanics to compatibility. You don't understand how to, to determine compatibility. Remember I said earlier, dating is a process of getting to know someone. The only way you get to know them is give them a barrage of questions. So you can start, because look, when we're meeting total strangers, the only way we get to know someone is to interview them. Oh my God, Jonathan, every dating coach tells me not to interview people. No, quite the opposite. Your job is to, to determine who this person is, especially before you get physical. And men are driven by the biology. That's how we're driven. It's your job to be the gatekeeper of sex. Okay, the second thing a man says or does that might be using you, he doesn't open up to you. He doesn't open up emotionally to you. I know how many of you might have felt that in the early stage of dating, and he might open up on his problems with his past relationships or marriage. A man might talk to you about his past, especially if he was in a unhappy marriage or a miserable relationship, he might throw the other person under the bus. But that's not opening up to you. What opening up means is he actually expresses beyond the, oh my God, you're the most amazing woman on the planet and I'd like to marry you that he says on the first or second or third date. I'm talking about opening up to you about his feelings, about your relationship, and more importantly, opening up to gratitude about your relationship. That's right. Gratitude is the key to real, is one of the keys to opening up emotionally with another person. And if he avoids it, or and if he avoids talking on the phone with you, if there's a bit of distance, you know, this happens with the, the guys that all they want to do is text. Texting is the weakest form of communication. Texting is the weakest form of communication. Number three, he doesn't ask you about you after the hunt phase. Once he has conquered you, I, God, that sounds so, um, that sounds so, um, not cruel, but just, um, um, what's the word? I mean, it sounds toxic, okay? And he conquered you. But the whole men love the hunt and men love the chase. Well, what did they hunt and chase, ladies? Are they hunting around? I want a relationship. I want a relationship. Is that what they're hunting? Remember, they say, they can tell you they care about you. They can say they use you. They, or excuse me, they care about you and demonstrate they care about you. But commitment is really caring about you. So, And beyond that is really getting to know you after you've had sex together. That's right asking deeper questions about you. Is he getting to know you? Your job is to get to know him. And remember I said my discovery call with me, my job is to teach you based on your personality, what questions you should be asking a guy to determine who he is. And quite frankly, he needs to be doing the same thing of you. And if he hasn't done this to really get to know you after the, the sex phase, um, he's probably going to use you. He doesn't protect you. I don't mean he doesn't physically protect you. He doesn't emotionally protect you. If a man says he cares about you and won't commit, if a man is dating multiple people at the same time, this happens a lot. I, I know a lot of women who men will start, they're sleeping with men. I mean, this has happened so frequently. The man will tell her about his other dating conquests because she's hoping she's going to be the one picked. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many hundreds of times I've talked to women and they're hoping that they're going to be the one picked. I think it's because there's the fear. It's the fear. What did I write down here? The fear that there are so few choices when you think this person is really be you know unique amongst all other. They feel like if they stick it out long enough, they'll be the one to win. And let me tell you, neither women will win or the, of all the women he's sleeping with. And then he might end up choosing the woman that is most dysfunctional to him. If you're not familiar with the work of Harvell Hendricks and Helen Hunt, um, getting the love you want, why I'm recommending this book is because if you don't understand the Imago, why we choose partners the way we do. A lot of late ladies, look at, 
I know you found yourself in situations. You gave so much to the relationship. He ended it and he hooks up with the next woman he meets. Well, that's because that woman triggered all of his childhood wounds and he chose that woman over you because you weren't triggering his wounds. The fact is humans choose people oftentimes based on what's familiar from their childhood, what triggers our deep-seated wounds of not feeling good enough, not feeling lovable, not feeling likable. And they choose the partner, not the one that was the giver like you, but the, the partner who was rather a bitch. Excuse my French. And I don't mean the bitch as in babe in total control of herself. I'm talking about the one who was really problematic. Men choose women of drama because he was raised with drama in his life. And by the way, if you're not feeling not good enough, not lovable, not likable, I highly recommend checking out my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Up, and Spiritual Work. Link below to get a copy of my book. He doesn't protect you emotionally. A real gentleman knows that if he's not going to go the distance with you, and remember I said earlier, men know rather quickly, a man who protects you emotionally will bow out of the relationship sooner rather than later. The men who are using you will stay in a relationship because it benefits his needs and not your needs. Number five, he, you'll never meet his friends or family. He always makes excuses about introducing you into his life. Your time together is very, you know, concentrated, maybe in your home, maybe in his home. You know, men will drive for sex. So just because he drove to you doesn't mean he actually cares about you. But if he doesn't invite you into his life, that's a good chance he's using you. Number six, he doesn't go out of his way for you. You might be sick. You know, it's interesting. I find so many women find themselves in these mediocre, casual relationships. And the minute they need to depend on the guy, he's nowhere to be found. Has this ever happened to you? If he's not there for you when you're not when you're sick or you need him, that's a good sign he's using you. And last but not least, and again, I, these aren't shocking. These are rather obvious. He does. He puts off being exclusive and he avoids conversations about the future. Ladies, Listen, women who are in happy relationships, they never had to worry about this because the men clearly knew very early on they wanted to pursue a relationship and these men were intentional. It's all of you that are in casual relationships or relationships of ambig ambiguity that you have a greater chance of being you. So what's your power in all this? By the way, I swear, swear a little, you'll feel better. What's your power in all this? Your power is to establish your standards right from the get-go. If you don't know what your standards are, reach out to me. I can help you with that. And number two, your job is to ask the questions very early on to weed out, be a detective to determine if he can meet your standards. And third, and most importantly, is you have to be the you have to be a psychologist to determine. Is this person emotionally mature enough to be in a relationship? Does he have relationship skills? If you're not familiar with my chart, um, here, where's this? My chart on um, emotional maturity and relationship skills. Roughly 20% of the population, by the way, this is not a fact, it's merely an opinion. 20% of the population has clinical issues. And while I say 20% are emotionally healthy, and have good relationship skills, the vast majority of humans are dysfunctional. This is just an opinion I'm sharing with you. But you have a greater chance to meet an emotionally constipated man than a man who actually has the skills. And by the way, ladies, you are no picnic at this either. You know, let me give you an example how you all say I, communication is so important and honesty is so important. And yet you are silent when it comes to speaking up, that's not honest with him. If you're not being honest is telling him, I don't feel good about these things. What are you going to do about it? In other words, tell him, look, I don't feel good about this dynamic. What are you going to do about it? And he will bail nine out of 10 times. 
It's better that he bailed sooner rather than later. Look at that woman I shared with you. Three years driving to his place most of the time. The minute they moved in together, it was a disaster. The fact is, is we really don't know people in this long, drawn out dating process. I'm Listen, I'm a big proponent as you dive into the deep end, you figure it out quickly and see if you're a match with one another. This is why I talk about in my private coaching, radical honesty, pre-qualifying your prospect, laying your cards on the table and establishing the rules of engagement. And if you need some support with that, reach out to me. All right. I think you got the gist of the seven most shocking things men will say will do to use you. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below. If this resonated with you, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. And in the links below are copies to get all the things I recommend. All right, it's Q&A time. So it's time to answer questions. So let's see what we have here today. Uh, if you have a question for me, write the word question, then post the question thereafter, or you can purchase a super sticker, super chat. All the monies from the super sticker, super chat goes to a scholarship fund in the name of my son, Connor Asley. That's a picture of him right there. He's my son who passed away almost five years ago. I can't believe it's been five years. In his honor, I've started a scholarship fund to donate to causes like the Hoffman Process and Insight Institute. There's a little dollar sign in the chat box if you want to donate. And if you're watching the replay, it's a super thanks you can purchase. So please help the Connor Asley Scholarship Fund. All right. If you have a question, write the word question, then post the question thereafter. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, can I ask? Can I ask how you would feel about having an open AI bot in your chat? I have no interest in that. <laughs> um, good morning. Thank you for this live. You're very welcome. Pat says, most men are unable to meet me where I am at and camp cramp my style. This is something I have finally learned about myself. I've raised my kids and now I want to live the rest of my life in peace. Well, I don't understand what that means, uh, meet you where you're at. But um, listen, folks, if you want a significant, if you want a life partner, this is my channel is all about those that want a life partner. Look, at those know that I'm in a significant relationship with someone. We live together. You know, here's the thing about midlife. Um, you know, a lot of people are gun shy about marriage. Okay, that's fair enough. You know, if you've been married once or twice before, it can be a little bit scary given that third marriages have a 75% divorce rate. That can be a little bit scary. I think when you live with someone and you actually get along great with each other, I mean, you really get along great with each other. You're able to navigate your finances well together. You're able to spend time with family and friends together. You're able, you, you're there for one another when each is sick. You know, it doesn't have to be about marriage, but that commitment to one another is really, have you noticed, is he there for you when you're sick? Is he there for you when you have a problem and he, need, you know, he invests in you? That's a true protector is a person that is there for you when you're sick, but is there for you emotionally as well. And you do the same for him. Anyways, I went off on a tangent. So thanks, Pat. Um, okay, let's keep going here. Um, Artemis says, I love you, Jonathan. You seem to really care about us and you always want the best for all of us. You know, I, I I do have, I wonder why I am such an advocate for women. I think it's because I feel guilt because I've used women. And remember when I was struggling to find the words earlier in the conversation? I never felt like I intentionally used women. I did it by default. And what I mean to say is, during the initial stage of lust and limerence, I only care, like lust causes a man, or at least caused me, I should say, to be driven for my own needs. And what I didn't realize is while I was being transparent with someone, you know, and there's a, there's a weird space between when you're chasing sex, you really think you like someone, all of these chemicals are being released in your brain, you like them, you like them, you like them. And then what was fascinating to me after sex, all of a sudden, it's kind of like, what was that line in um, something about Mary? You know, uh, he was telling, um, oh God, who was the actor? Um, 
Ben Stiller, you know, you need to, you need to jack off before you go on a date because you're not driven by sex. So what happens is who we really are happens after we ejaculate. And then all of a sudden you realize you're with someone you know nothing about. You don't feel safe with this person. Ladies, this might happen to you. I know it happens to men. So, so I didn't me intentionally mean to use women. So in a way, my channel is my way of like waking women up to guys like I was. I'm not proud of it, but I see this now happening over and over again. So I'm an advocate. Listen, I'm an advocate for men and women alike because I said this earlier in the video. Ladies, you're no picnic as well. Okay. You all, you're not, you know, you are not set above men. Men might be jerks and assholes. A lot of women can be selfish as well. Now I know a lot of women can be givers too. So, and a lot of men can be givers. The reality is, is my channel is about human development. It's about human behavior. I'm here to be a wake up call for both genders. This is why I highly recommend reading the book if the Buddha dated, if it Buddha dated, it throws out the BS gender rhetoric and says, how can we connect as human beings with one another? I highly recommend reading this book. All right, let's see what we've got for questions. Uh, Nancy wrote, many, many years ago, I was dating someone for quite some time and I lost my job in apt apartment and he told me to go to a shelter. Well, I'm, well sounds like um, he didn't, Love you enough to take you into his life. That's commitment. Um, all right. Robin says, what if he wants commitment only on his terms? Meaning I give up my home and family and move to where he lives, which is four hours away. Well, that's a very common thing. Women tend to pretzel themselves for men. So this is a conversation to have with one another. He doesn't want to leave. So what is the commitment you're going to make for one another? Are you moving into his place? Because if you're just moving from your place to be his next door neighbor, that's, I mean, he's, he doesn't recognize how much of a sacrifice you're making. That's not being protective of you. Okay. If he's not contemplating how much of a sacrifice you're making, then he's caring about his needs most likely versus your needs. So Robin, thank you for posting that. Hey, one of our group members from my Facebook group, by the way, called Mid Love Life Mastery. It's a link below. Question just wrote. I've been divorced nine years. I met someone and mutually and emotionally and physically connect. What questions do you ask to build trust and feel comfortable to move in? Okay, again, in my private coaching, I teach you based on your personality. So your personality might be different than someone else's. However, I highly recommend asking this question. What does a relationship look like for you? And what does commitment look like for you? And how do you know, how important is trust in a relationship? And when do you know you can trust someone? These are deeper questions to be asking. You know, I would look at his past relationship experience to get a sense. I'd try to find out questions about his childhood to see where his uh, belief systems are. I would ask questions about his values um, and each and as they relate to your values. So, again, I can help you with that. Schedule a discovery call with me. Thank you for that question. SR writes, question. We've been talking with the intention of marriage for 10 months, long distance, met four times. I feel we're not making progress as he's about to finish his PhD. Should I wait or move on? Listen, meeting someone four times in 10 months, probably, okay, folks, it takes roughly about 40 hours just to get to know someone, according to Jay Shetty, okay? He wrote the book, Eight Rules of Love. Is that the title? It might be a different title. Okay. I always say it takes about 100 hours of face-to-face -face time just to build the first layer of trust. And Jay Shetty says it takes 200 hours of face-to-face -face time doing social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends just to build, develop a friendship. You two, most likely, you got together four times. You had sex together. You had a good time. You went out to dinner. You know, your telephone calls are, how's your day going? Did you have a good day? I hope you had a good day. No, chances are very slim, okay? Now, um, 
and I would try to solve that distance problem or see each other a lot more frequently before you disrupt your life with someone. That's my recommendation or get those 200 hours of face-to-face -face time. And then sleeping together doesn't count as face-to-face -face time. All right, Kathy writes, question. How do you know if anyone is genuine anymore? <laughs> Everyone is guilty before proven innocent. I, I believe most humans are good people. Most men are good people. They're just bad daters. I think most humans have weak emotional maturity and weak relationship skills, okay? That's genuine. They're just bad at it. That's how I believe. How do you determine if someone is genuine with you? See, love often, most of you focus on love being all about the good times. True love is being there for someone during the bad times. Well, they wipe the vomit off your face if you're going through chemotherapy. That's when you know someone's genuine character, you know, is when you're when you can actually see them during tough times, that's when you know their character. Um, okay, so that's just my thoughts on that one anyway. Um, okay, let's keep going here. Could you give additional examples of protecting you emotionally besides ending things if he's not that in you? That's a great question. So most men... When you challenge them to care about your emotions, they'll break up with you saying, I can't give you what you need, okay? That's what most men will do. So protecting you emotionally is really recognizing that you might be attached to him. And he's aware of that. Now, it's so long as he's being upfront with you, look, I don't want to commit to you and I'm dating other people then you have the choice at that moment whether or not you're going to accept that. The problem most of you have is you have a fantasy, a delusion, um, or a story made up in your head that you can change him. Folks, the best thing you can do is when someone says, I don't want to commit to you, I'm dating other people at the same time, and you're having sex, move on. For nothing else, I don't want you to get cooties from the guy. All right? Great question. Uh, let's keep going. Oh, Vivian writes, question. Why some men start with so much plans as even marriage and kids on chat from an app without ever knowing the other person? And he keeps going to turn off the things when he, when is time match with actions? Okay. I think what you're trying to say is why do men come on strong when they haven't even met you? Okay. First off, if you're not familiar with the word lust, I would highly Google it. If you're not familiar with the term limerence, I'd highly Google that. Okay. What you have to understand, lust is that physical attraction for you. Limerence is an infatuation. Men might come on strong in the beginning because that's how we're biologically wired. We are wired to pursue you. Remember when I said earlier in the video, men love the hunt, men love the chase. What are they chasing? They're chasing a physical relationship with you. A grown-up man actually wants to get to know you beyond the physical. So he's not driven by the physical. So coming back to your question, why do men start this? Remember I said he says he cares about you. He does things that care about you, but he doesn't want to commit. Because we know if we do what I call relationship talk, we'll get laid. I'm sorry. I'm being blunt here. We know if we say, I want a relationship, you guys will spread your legs. Please forgive that analogy. But I'm just saying to you, you have to determine what does he mean by the words, I want a relationship. I want a long-term relationship. Long-term relationship might mean I see you every three weeks at my beck and call. That could be for years, okay? If you don't describe what a relationship looks like and get some sense, does he want the same things? Um, if he wants the same things, then it's on you. It's not on him. Okay. I hope that helps Vivian. Thank you so much. Um, all right, let's keep going here. Uh, Lauren says question. 
Should you trust a man who hides his real age and a man who makes promises about what he is going to do? Okay, first off, I think this age question I'm going to address. Look, at with the online dating marketplace, men and women over 50 years old often fudge on their age because of fear of rejection. That's not lying. That's fudging because they fear being rejected. That doesn't make them bad people for doing it. The question is, is, are they honest with you when you meet them prior to meeting them or right after meeting them? And then you get to make a choice. I prefer people being honest on the telephone if their dating profiles are not, um, if they fudged on it. So that's just my opinion on that. Um, as far as trust, trust is built over time. You know, look at, we are humans. We are flawed. We all, listen, he who has never lied, cast the first stone. If you have lied once in your life, can I trust you? Okay. If you've lied, and by the way, we lie to ourselves all the time. Should I trust you? Um, that's my two cents on that. So thanks so much for that one. Um, Vivian says, thank you so much for picking my question. All right. Do we have any more questions? Post a comment below. I'd like to, I'd like to, okay, here we go. Again, write the word question and then post the question thereafter. I'm 46 year old grandma and I'm honest in my profile. I'm not embarrassed of my age or being a grandma. Well, Siri. Okay. My sweetheart. She was, I'm going to be candid with you. She fudged on her age by, I believe, nine years, okay? And then in the dating profile, she wrote her actual age, okay? And she said four children, okay? Um, she had four children. So, and or no, four children, excuse me, and four grandchildren. So, uh, and I still chose her. So um, it's not about embarrassment. I just do believe people fear rejection for their age. So thank you so much. Janine writes, question. Why does a man you haven't met met yet keep putting off meeting because even when you tell him to leave you alone, he keeps calling because you gave him the time of day once, more than once, and he feels an attachment towards you. Guess what you do? As Marie would say, block, 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 block them on their phone. Okay, uh, let's keep going. Uh, Jennifer says, my age is two years off online dating search. If I, I, if I tell men, if I meet them, I'm 48, but keep getting, keep getting told I look 35 and I hit, hit on by younger men. Okay. Everybody, everybody thinks they look younger than their age. Okay. I get it. By the way, now there's this meme of the golden girls at age 50. Remember Betty White and, uh, I forgot the two other actresses, um, B. Arthur, I think it was. Anyways, and a picture of Halle Berry, Michelle Pfeiffer, and um, and Julia Roberts. A big, I mean, that's a big, they looked younger, okay? Here's the thing. Everybody thinks they look younger. Look at, the fact is, after 40, 45, 50 years old, we discriminate based on age. It's just the reality. And so fudging on dating profiles is very common for men and women. It's just the reality. What matters most is, are you honest with each other after you made a connection with one another. That's what I think is most important. So thank you so much for that uh, question. Um, Pam says, I disagree. Not telling your correct age is a lie. You can call it fudge, but it is dishonest. Well, again, why does this happen? Fear of rejection. It's not to manipulate a person. It's because we fear being rejected because of people do, people search based on, we we judge based on age. Doesn't make them bad people. That's why I'm just saying, I don't believe that they are liars. I just believe that there's the fear of rejection and not, and quite frankly, I think my sweetheart and I, it wouldn't have happened. We didn't judge the person as being a liar is my point, okay? <laughs> Filippo says, the best wine comes out of an old bottle. That's funny, <laughs> Okay, uh, one of my Facebook group members says, I have blocked people, but one has found a way to call as an unknown caller. I didn't accept the call and he busted himself by leaving voicemails. I'm sorry, you, you sounds like you have a stalker. You might want to, um, if you have his telephone number, maybe you go to the police and see, or go to the FBI and see what they can do to help you. Just a curious question. Okay, um, 
Stephanie says women are severely judged on age. Men are allowed to age. Um, yes. However, women, women in their fifties, they discriminate on age too. I mean, I would say men tend to discriminate more based on age. Now the men with money, and by the way, my sweetheart is a year older than me, lady. So I didn't discriminate on age. Um, while there's a huge percentage of men who might seek younger women, I think women discriminate based on age too. A woman will tell me, I don't want to be a man's nurse or purse. So it's common for both genders. It just probably is more common that men discriminate. I will agree with that. All right. Gloria says, I think you're justifying the age lie. I'm not justifying. I'm just giving, I'm just giving an explanation to why I think it happens. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. See, the difference is I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm merely saying that I don't think that a person who is flawed should be judged because again, he who has never lied cast the first stone. That's my point. If you've never lied, bravo to you. You are in that one-tenth of one-tenth of one-tenth of one-tenth of one-tenth of the human population, in my opinion. And you can judge me for that. <laughs> Kathy says, or Esther says, excuse me, Jonathan, don't you think sex should be free? Otherwise, it's prostitution. Maybe you should say sex should be in a committed relationship. Just saying that is because sex is free. You know what? Thank you for bringing that up. Um, it's the old adage, why buy the cow if you can get the milk for free is kind of where that's coming from. I'm not saying that's a that's a crude analogy. I agree. People that should people who have regular sex together should be in a committed relationship with one another. The tricky part is this. Sex is part of the decision-making process. I've known a lot of women who said after sex with the guy the first night, that was her deal breaker. For men, that might be a deal breaker too. It's if you're going to have regular sex together, I believe it should be in a committed relationship because the fact is, is two people can be in a committed relationship, have sex together, and then break up if the sex wasn't good. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying that happens. Hmm. All right. Kathy says, I'm a 60-year-old. I am 60 and widowed for 15 years. I recently met a man who is 77 widowed. I don't want to freak him out by asking him to meet somewhere or do something together. How do I test the waters? Um, you ask him to meet somewhere or do something together. That's how you test the waters. That's it. Just what? What's the harm in, listen, it's called meet and greet. You meet for coffee. You find a place that's mutually convenient to both for you and you meet for coffee. And then you go from there. Okay, that's my suggestion. Um, one of my Facebook users says, question, in terms of protecting you emotionally, what about giving you a heads up if they know in advance that something might upset you? I'd rather be told ahead of time than for him to hide it or ignore it and either hope I don't find out or hope I don't get upset afterwards. Is it reasonable to expect men to have that capacity to do so? You know, I, I, with a group of my guy friends, one of them said to me, it is easier to get forgiveness than permission. If you're going to do something that you know will visibly upset them, it's men will, it, it, this is more childlike things people do. This is what children do. It's easier to get forgiveness than permission. Now, an emotionally mature person, if they know they're going to upset you with something, then they are open and honest. Why don't, by the way, this is a human flaw. Women do this as well as, you know, like think about the woman who went shopping, this a married woman who went shopping and spent all this money on clothes and then comes back and says, oh, I just spent all this money on clothes. And he's like visibly upset because you just, you know, with, you know, um, you know, uh, emptied the bank account. I'm being tongue in cheek here. Um, I think it's just humans, humans fear, humans fear, um, being, being direct, being transparent. It's just a human flaw. All right. Hey, I want to just thank Miss Garden as being a new member. Thank you so much. Here, let's go. We've just got a new member who joined the group. You can hit that join button next to the, um, the like button on the video if you want to join uh, my YouTube channel. All right, let's keep going. Um... Pam says, I, I am 65. I met a guy and he said he lied about his age about, wait, 
lied his age nine years older. I said I wasn't into dating someone his age, so he so he wasted both our time. Again, men and women alike do this. What am I going to say? Humans do this. Uh, yeah. By the way, dating is, listen, dating can feel like a waste of time. What about people that you meet that their pictures were, you know, 10 years younger? I mean, this is part of the process. If we're not accepting of the process, then meet people organically. By the way, when you meet someone organically, you don't know their age. Just remember that. Uh, Jennifer says, I dated a man with erectile dysfunction. He had major issues and it ended badly. He wouldn't go to therapy for it. Half the, I mean, a significant percentage of men over 60 have erectile dysfunction. Significant women over 60 have um, menopausal issues and emotional issues. That's just part of aging. Um, all right, let's see. Jane says, question, or not a question, more to the point, age and personal details available to perfect strangers is risky and being slotted into the concept of what they feel that number means is weird. Age gaps can work, but withdraws back or draws, but draws back. Thank you for sharing that. Vivian writes, question, how can I express I don't feel comfortable initiating a chat or whatsoever without starting to see each other in person? I don't like to initiate indicate and it if i don't know the man is serious listen if you two are total strangers i didn't until you physically meet with one another it's all a prospecting experience look at when i used to be in corporate sales i remember each month i'd work on 10 new clients only would secure a sale with one nine were they were they were liars, not buyers. That's just part of the process. If we're fearful of the process, then it's going to be hard to really get to know someone. You got to make the effort. So in, my, in this case, Vivian, I'd say make the effort to meet and then see what happens. He's not going to be serious until he actually likes you. And if you two don't, if you haven't built up that familiarity with one another or rapport, then he doesn't, he won't know if he's going to like you. Does that help? All right, Priya. Guy calls me 2 a.m. on my phone in silent. I ask why you call. He wants to meet at 2.30. Never plans for real dates. He plans, uh, but wait, he plans, but guarantee if he can kiss me, if we can meet before itself. He's looking, look at any guy that calls after, any guy that calls after uh, eight o'clock, any guy calls that late is looking for a booty call. All right, Marcella writes, question. Isn't the problem one of self-love? It is with me. Yes, self-love is one of the key issues. When we don't love ourselves, we oftentimes accept being used because we're not standing in our sovereignty, our self-worth, our self-esteem, and self-confidence. Um. Esther says, I am French, LOL. You're excused. Thank you so much. Um, this is why dating world is a mess because people disagree on ethics. Well, of course, wouldn't it be great if we lived in a world where everyone could establish to share their real age, okay, and not be rejected for it. Wouldn't that be great? That's not the world we live in. We live in a we live in a discriminating judged world. I'm just here to say I don't judge people as being bad. That's all I'm saying. Why do you guys keep wanting to repeat this? All right. Um I won't date anyone that wants to hook up first before getting to know you. There you go. Um, Rika writes question online dating for one week divorced in 2019. No kids did eight dates workbook together states. He knows he wants to marry me. And today asked for my ring size. He's coming over in a month. Red flag. <laughs> well, red flag merely means ask more questions when you say he's coming over in a month. Okay. I'm going to assume Wait, online dated for a week. Divorce, no kids. Okay. He states he knows what he wants to marry me. By the way, I'm assuming you guys haven't physically met. This has been an internet connection. Is it a red flag? No, he's just 
you know, he's being in either limerence or lust. A real relationship is, look at, again, it takes about 40 hours of face-to-face -face time just to begin to get to know someone. It takes 100 hours of face-to-face -face time just to build the first layer of trust, not true trust, the first layer of trust. And it takes 200 hours of face-to-face -face time to begin building a friendship with someone. My guess is you haven't established that. And so is it a red flag? Red flags means ask more questions. Deal breaker means no. Is that a deal breaker? You have to ask that for yourself. All right. Hey, listen, this was my Saturday morning coffee with you all. I hope you found value on the seven shocking things men say or do to use you. Um, if you found value in this content, please post. Or if you have a question, please post it below. If you find value in this, please hit that like button. Please share this video with friends. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Um, and I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrack of self-love. I'm going to read, ooh, pit stains. I'm going to give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet teddy bear a pillow and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. I want to thank Sabby and Pam and Miss Amy and Rika and Vivian, Priya and Janice and Gloria, Melissa, Esther, Marcel, uh, Let's see, Jane, Jennifer, Gloria, Pam, I think I've said it, Laverne, everyone have a great day. Bye now.